Hello and welcome to episode two of Bit by Bit. Uh, thank you very much to everyone who watched the first episode, liked it, commented it. I see that we had 49 views, which is 48 more than I thought we'd have. So, you know, that is a good start. Uh, please very do let us know start. if there's anything absolutely that uh, you want us to cover, if you want uh, format change. Speaking of formats, we've changed things around slightly this time around. So yep. we were on our laptops last time around. Oh, at least I was. What about, what about I you? Was the same. you? I was the same. Okay. All right, so what we did between last episode and this episode is we tested quite a few different phones just to see what kind of looks better. And we decided to record this on our phones using the selfie cameras. Woohoo, I finally have a reason to use a selfie camera. I never ever use a selfie camera on my phone, but uh, okay, so now we found a reason to do that. And we tried multiple phones. We tried quite a few different phones, right? I mean, what, which ones do you remember us testing out? So we tested out the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra. We did the mm -hmm. Oppo Find X. 2 Pro, we also did the P40 Pro, and That's we true. also did the iPhone, so. Correct. So I settled on the iPhone, this is me from the iPhone. Which phone did you settle on? I have the S20 Ultra. Cool, so the 40 megapixel selfie camera does it for you? Of course, All right. specs over everything. So. <laughs> well, if you like specs, then we're definitely gonna like talking about the OnePlus 8 that uh, was launched last night, OnePlus yeah. 8 Pro and OnePlus 8. So I guess let's start with that. Let me just pull up my notes over here real quick as well. So mm -hmm. um, why don't you get started? Tell me what you thought of it. Okay, so in terms of their design, how they look, I don't think that was mm -hmm. a big surprise because we saw the design like five months ago. So it's not that much of a surprise nowadays. I think any phone, just leaks out way before. So that doesn't remain much of a surprise. Um, the punch hole dot camera thing that they've gone for instead of the, uh, what do you call it? Pop the thing selfie. where it goes up and down, pop-up pop selfie camera. So I guess that's a good move because I think everyone's sort of moving towards or back towards the punch hole style. And I uh, but we can talk about that. Why, why? Uh, I love the uninterrupted look of the older one, the OnePlus 7, uh, 7 Pro and the 7T Pro. I love that it was just a okay. full screen on there. It was something that differentiated it, right? I mean, now it just looks like every single freaking phone out there, whether it's the Samsung, whether it's okay. the Oppo, you know, it's just exactly everything. I think, I think they reverted back just so they could uh, match their, like, their competition because all their competition is exactly the same. And also for the IP68 certification. Although saying that, why does the OnePlus 8 have that design then? I think the OnePlus 8 could have stuck with the pop-up style without the IP rating because it doesn't have it. And the 8 Pro obviously could have had the whole punch. It probably costs uh, more to do that design. And I'm assuming for the OnePlus 8, they wanted to save up on as much costs as they could, which is probably okay. the reason. I wouldn't say that uh, it had anything to do with the reliability issues because I mean, look, it's been about what, a year since the OnePlus 7 was out with the camera and I haven't necessarily heard bad things about that design failing or breaking. But you don't take that many selfies anyway. I'm not sure me, people no, I, oh, I, I don't even own one. No, sorry, not me. So let me just clarify that. But I mean, on the internet in general, I haven't yeah. necessarily read about people, you know, I, I do like uh, just uh, reading up on phones, how people are using them. And I haven't mm -hmm. really heard any complaint, honestly speaking, whether it was on XDA forums or Reddit or wherever else it is, I really haven't seen anyone, you know, saying that, oh, it was unreliable, it broke or whatever else. And I thought that was a good design advantage they had last year. I think that was one of the things that separated them uh, from some of the other phone manufacturers. So them okay. losing out on that, going to the punch roll, I get the IP68 rating. Maybe it was required for that. But um, I think it takes more cost to make a pop-up style camera with IP rating than, you know, Sticking yeah, but if you're so. charging nine hundred dollars, nine you know thousand dollars for your phone, then come on, I mean, you know. But they have an excuse, the right? No, later. no other, no other manufacturer has done it yet. So has done what it would yet? Probably cost them a pop-up style design with IP rating. Okay. Okay. Fair so enough. So maybe once yeah. we start seeing that from like the high-end manufacturers, if we yeah. do see it, we'll start yeah. to see one plus revert back. So maybe this okay. is like a step backward for the future. I'll get back to it once we start talking about the costs factor of this. So, okay. you know, okay, fine. Now, what, what else about the design? Uh, the ultra curved displays, I've never been a fan. They look good, but to me, they've always been, I mean, I always have so many accidental touches on them, whether it was the Samsung Galaxy S7 or S8, or, you know, even the Oppo Find X2, I think we spoke about that in the last episode as yep. well. 
uh, I am not a fan of anything that, you know, just ruins the experience of using the phone. And uh, I think one of the reviewers was at MKBHD. I'm not sure if it was a Dieter Bone from The Verge. One of them, they mentioned that they did have, they did register a lot of false touches, you know, while using the phone. So okay. that would definitely be a non-starter for me. I mean, um, you know, the, 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 my interest in that phone just pretty much tanked as soon as I read that. Uh, I am probably still going to order one just for the heck of it, just kind of, you know, play around with it. Because look, OnePlus makes good phones. There's no denying that, you know. Uh, but uh, that ultra curved screen, hopefully if they can solve uh, with the software, because I've never really had much of an issue with Huawei phones. I mean, they've used curved screens as well. Yeah, so I that, think that's what I was going to mention. Great. The P40 Pro that I've been using for a couple of days, I haven't had any issues with the curved no, screen. Absolutely. Find I mean, X2 even Pro a little phones. bit. Find X2 Pro a little bit. Um, the S10, I think more the Samsung series in general, I had a problem with. But okay. the S20 now has like flat screens. So oh, absolutely. S20 is completely solved that. So I think maybe for the OnePlus 8, not the Pro version, they could have gone for the flatter design. Um, you know, I wish that they would have gone for the flatter design on the maybe. regular OnePlus 8. It would have saved some costs as well on that side. And, you know, maybe okay. they could have used that for the pop-up camera or whatever. But uh, I don't like that design direction. Okay. What about the colors? Um, I like that interstellar glow color that they have. It reminds Instagram me very much edition. of the <laughs> Instagram edition. It reminds me of a uh, Samsung, the Galaxy Note 10, uh, yeah. Aura, Aura Glow. I mean, it's very, very yeah. similar to that. Uh, I'm surprised they didn't bring that to the 8 Pro. I'm surprised they only kept that for the regular one, for the smaller one. Uh, the 8 Pro, the green... I think, has the green color, right? The 8 Pro is yes. unique. Yes, the 8 Pro has got the green, exactly. Which is nice. I like that mint green color. I think that looks kind of nice. And I think if I was to pick one up, that would be the color that I would pick. I think it's you? nice because all the other flagships we've seen, and we discussed this last time also, like they don't have that good of colors. I think the P40 Pro has the best mm. colors out of all the other ones. So it's nice to see something different with the mint green. I would pick up the mint green too. Um, yeah. But I also like the blue one. I don't know what they're calling it. Um, ultramarine blue or something like that but that looks that looks great um, on screen i don't know in real life though i'd like to see how it looks in real life because last year's blue model i wasn't too impressed with it i played around yeah, but with last that year one. i think they went with uh, haze blue or like a, like not a very vibrant blue if i'm not mistaken this time around it looks like really vibrant really mm. flashy so i don't know you know, the color I really liked on OnePlus was uh, on the 60 when they had that purple, that thunder purple or whatever, that, was, that sort of moved between gray and purple. Okay. Oh, that looks stunning. That was a really yeah. nice color. Um, haven't brought anything like that back, but, you know, we have what we have. So let's see how that goes. Yeah, I think apart from that, OnePlus is pretty much spot on in specs. 865, octa-core, 12 gigabytes of RAM. Oxygen OS also has pretty much no issues in terms of software. Mm -hmm. I think it's very clean, doesn't bring any bloatware. So um, don't really have to talk much about that. What about the cameras? Yeah. What do you think? So again, I think it's something that we'll have to test out to see how good they are. And you know, reviews have been sort of a mixed bag. Some people are saying that they're not necessarily the best cameras. Mm -hmm. Some of them have been pretty impressed with the camera. So I think it's just something that we're gonna need to wait and see. But you know what I was thinking about this, that, um, you know, if they are matching or coming close to what the S20 offers, or, you know, I, I, I don't think it's going to be close to the Huawei P40, because I think that's yeah, another week. So. Yeah, but I think if it can come close to the S20, uh, then, you know what, uh, if at its release it can do that, uh, maybe a Gcam mod or maybe with some software updates, they could actually improve on that. So yeah. I am going to cut cameras some slack. I am going to wait for it to, you know, mature a little bit, test it out myself and then decide on that. You know, a Fair camera enough. is something so subjective that it's kind of hard to sort of decide whether it's good or bad. Yes, I mean, it is good. There's no denying that it's good. The sensors, the hardware they've used is great. But uh, the S20 Ultra on paper sounds pretty amazing as well, doesn't it? Um, you know, using it in real let's life. Let's not talk about story. it. Let's not talk about it. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, let's see. I'll, I'll reserve my judgment on that until, until I get to play with it. So I, th I think um, the OnePlus 8, the vanilla, it has the same or almost the same configuration as the 7T, if I'm not mistaken, 48, 16. Seven? And, is it the 7T yeah, or is it from the Pro? No, it's the same configuration as the 7T, I think. Okay. 
So it's a triple so camera. So they haven't done anything, okay, on camera with that. It's the same configuration. Sensors and are the I would same expect, as well? I'm not sure. I'm not sure, okay. to be honest. But I would expect similar performance. Like, I wouldn't say it would be a massive improvement from the 7T to the 8, as much as it would be from the 7T Pro to the 8, 8 Pro. I think that would be yeah. a big change. Probably. So a 7T camera was just okay as well. wasn't necessarily the greatest camera. Um, but I but think it had good video recording. Video stabilization, both at 1080 and 4K, was pretty good. Like, I tested it out. Uh, when running and when going upstairs and stuff and it was pretty stable pretty solid nice. I, I like that phone a lot but I think okay. that was because it was it was a more compact phone and I think that's what the one plus eight is going for because I think when I was watching the keynote they mentioned a mm -hmm. lot about how compact it is how much yep. smaller it is compared to the iPhone 11 and the Pro Max and everything so maybe so they want was... to feel to yeah, this was something I didn't really like much about the presentation as well. They just Why? kept comparing themselves to the iPhone over and over and over and over again. Oh, no, I, um, I don't like the comparison part, but I like the fact that the phone oh, itself yeah. is really compact. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. But I mean, you know, when you're the iPhone 11 or 10s or 10 is a three-year-old design, right? I mean, I, Apple introduced it with the iPhone 10. So you're comparing yourself to a three-year-old design. Is that really what you want to compare yourself? I mean, why not bring the P40, right? I mean, the P40 Pro's got a slightly larger screen. It's got a 6.58 in screen versus 6.55. Not that your eyes will be able to see that, but technically it is larger. And technically it is thinner as well than, you know, than the OnePlus uh, 8, the regular one. It's slightly thinner. So there are phones that offer this, you know, one-hand usability or whatever else that you want to call it. Uh, and then comparing it to a three-year-old design just didn't, you know, I, I don't know yeah. what it speaks, and, you know, just doesn't speak much for them. Yes, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, they didn't talk much about gaming. I don't think it's too focused on gaming. They obviously have their gaming optimization and stuff, but I think that's just upgraded from last year. Pretty standard. Didn't they say that it's the best gaming phone on the market? I think they said that because it has the highest uh, refresh rate screen with the QHD plus and 120 but hertz. No, but weren't you telling me about the other phone, the Nubia? What was it? I'm forgetting some 144. Yeah, that has a 144. Yeah, that has a 144. But I don't think, see, when they say best gaming phone on the market, I don't think they talk about like those companies. They probably want to just focus on the companies that consumers know like generally. So Samsung, Apple, all of that. And then they sort of just like, you know, it's not really the best, but they want to push it as the best. Look, I mean, I'm just going to play with the devil's advocate over here is that, I mean, who knows about OnePlus outside the tech circle, right? I mean, I, you know, nobody knows about OnePlus either. I'm sorry. I mean, especially here in the region, they might be getting more popular in the other parts of the world. But here in the UAE, I mean, I don't think anyone outside yeah. the tech circle really knows much about them. And I think that's why the keynotes that we see over the years, they're all focused on the US, they're focused in India, because that's where they have the biggest consumer base. So even their new features this year, IP68 and wireless charging on the 8 Pro, I think that's more focused on the USA market, because those two features are in demand for people who use smartphones in the USA. Like when the 7T Pro came out, or the 7T came out, and it didn't have wireless charging it didn't have water resistance although it did have like unofficial water resistance mm -hmm. i think there was quite a few people who didn't like the fact that it didn't have official and because okay. they're going towards this they're also going for that verizon contract uh, yeah i think that's like, a good news for the so, us so i think over the next couple of years we'll see oneplus really tackle the usa market and fun fact i went to the oneplus 7t launch uh, in october in the UK, and I actually talked to Carl, um, the CEO. Okay. So before yep. the event, we were just standing around, and I just saw him. So I went up to him and asked him, like, "What's your next objective?" And he's like, "The next couple of years are going to be focused on the US." And I asked him specifically when he thinks, you know, like, the phones will start to become big in the UAE, just so I get an idea. And he said, "Not for the next two or three years." Okay. Did he so, answer that specifically, or did he just raise the middle finger? No, no, he. <laughs> I don't think they give a shit about our market, honestly speaking. It's going to be a while before they come here. But I think they should. Oh, maybe not, because like this market is really saturated when it comes to like those type of phones. We've got so many options here. Like mm -hmm. we've got Honor, we've got Oppo, we've got Realme, we've got yeah. I don't know, probably missing a Xiaomi. Yeah. So no, absolutely, it's a tough market to crack. Yep. 
And, All right, so and oh, wait, wait, wait. Before that, uh, it's a tough market to crack. And I think once they sort of establish themselves in the USA, it's easier to spread awareness other, uh, in other places. So maybe they're trying that route where, maybe let's so. say, it becomes famous in the USA and then people start hearing about it and then they sort of come to these areas. And I don't know. Maybe so. Like that. Maybe so. But I think enough I talk know. on all that. Let's talk about the price. The 699 price. 799 899 and 999 Correct. Those exactly. are the four brackets. So I think uh, now, as far as the Pro is concerned, let's start with that because it's really pushed in pricing. Uh, what was the last 70 Pro was what, 650? Somewhere or around that. Six, around that. Six, right. Yeah, six something. So now it's gone to 899 as the big, yeah. you know, it starts at $899. Now here is my problem with that, right? You walk into a McDonald's, you go ahead and order a Big Mac over there. And you okay. get to the counter and the, you know, you guy, you tell the guy, can I order a Big Mac? And the guy goes, absolutely. Would you like to try our new Big Mac, which has, I don't know, Kobe beef, Wagyu beef, whatever you want to call it, the premium ingredients, blah, 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 blah. And you're like, huh, okay, okay that sounds interesting. And he's like, okay, that'll be 50 dirham. You're like, what the hell? I'm at McDonald's. Would you pay 50 dirhams for a freaking burger at McDonald's? I mean, I can understand if this was High Joint or Lads Burgers or Shake Shack. You know, I'm ready to pay 50 dirhams for it. I am not going to pay 50 dirhams for a McDonald's burger. One plus the sort of price itself in a way where everything is considered value. I mean, this is how they started the brand, right? I mean, I went to a OnePlus because it had represented great value. I got great for my money, whatever I was spending. But now it being the same price as what Samsung or Huawei or um, iPhone is still a little bit more expensive than that. But I mean, it is trying to compete with those big boys now. Um, maybe that is their plan. Maybe this is what they want to do. But what is it that they're bringing to the table to compete with these guys? You know, I mean, the only phone that I've seen rise up to that level or the company that I've seen rise up to that level is Huawei over the last few years. Mm -hmm. And they did it by playing the camera game. I mean, their camera was just stunning. You know, it made you notice. But what is it about the OnePlus 8 Pro in specific that you can't find anywhere else? That's my question to you, that you'd pay that much money for. Is there any feature, is there anything in there that makes you go, you know what, I don't find there anywhere else. Uh, if it's the software, Pixel's there. If it's the camera, you've got Huawei, you've got Samsung, you've got Apple. If it's the speed, again, you've got all of these other phones. If it's the screen, you've got Samsung, you've got Oppo. There's nothing they're bringing I to the I think OnePlus wants to do what Apple's done. So they want to sort of bank on their loyal consumer base. And with people sort of owning OnePlus devices, if you, let's say, hold up a Realme device and a OnePlus device, you're not going to say these are two Android phones. You're going to say this is a OnePlus device because they've sort of established themselves in a market where their phones sort of look unique. Um, they look unique from like a Samsung. They look unique from like a Huawei phone. There's no denying that when people see these phones in public, a OnePlus does stand out as long as they know what a OnePlus phone is. So I, I guess, know. I mean, you know, that's what I think. Okay. I mean, you look at, uh, I mean, we just spoke about the P40's design. It's a stunning design. Yes, Samsung this year didn't really have that great of a design, but yeah. everybody knows Samsung. I mean, Samsung was pretty much the phone that I'd say made Android popular. Yes, Motorola yeah. with its uh, Moto, you know, did have a big impact with droids. But uh, I think Samsung was the one that, you know, to the, to the point where a lot of people didn't know what Android was. People just thought it was a Samsung phone, right? So Samsung yeah, yeah. is the one even that now, even that nowadays, it's still Samsung and iPhone. Exactly, exactly, exactly. So that's that's the thing. I mean, I feel that I don't know. I mean, OnePlus, the the biggest advantage they had was that providing cutting edge specs at a great price, and they've moved away from that. You know, I don't Maybe. know if the market base is big enough for them to do that just yet. Um, you know, yes, there is a lot. I completely get it. I mean, there is a following. There are people who like it, but they liked it because it provided you with great value. I'm not mm -hmm. sure if they're going to continue with it. Now, now that you're, you're in that ballpark where you can buy a Samsung or, you know, you can buy anything else that's as high end, then, you know, I don't know. I wouldn't, but uh, maybe I'm wrong. Okay. So I actually saw this chart um, in the morning today. So they were comparing the starting prices of OnePlus phones, I think, over the next... Uh, over the last six years mm -hmm. to Samsung prices, starting prices, not the okay. highest prices, the starting prices. So what I saw was from the graph, there is sort of a narrowing of the price difference. So OnePlus is getting closer and closer and closer. Um, it got really close to flagships in 2018, 
but then because of the iPhone 10, which was priced at $1,000, everyone started to mark up even more. So that sort of raised the gap again. So that was the trend I saw. Um, so if you look from like the starting to where they are now and compare starting base prices, the difference in pricing is still a lot. But I get what you're saying. Like it doesn't bring you the same value. So if you compare, let's say the Galaxy S20 vanilla mm -hmm. to the OnePlus 8, mm -hmm. like vanilla. Okay. So the OnePlus 8, or even the OnePlus 8 Pro, you could, consider, you could compare it to the OnePlus 8 Pro. You get okay. 120 hertz. Yep. You get IP68. Yep. You get a good software experience. You get the same mm -hmm. processing power. You get the same battery, maybe less so in terms of like charging. But I think if you compare, let's say, the OnePlus 8 vanilla to the S20, mm -hmm. the S20 offers a lot more for the price. So okay. then OnePlus misses out on like being the best budget phone because nowadays we have like three series for everything. And then when yep. you compare it to high end smartphones, it misses out because it's pricing it too high and exactly. it's not delivering on all the fronts that it's promising, especially the camera, which is like one of the biggest things. So I don't know. It's, it's like this middle ground that they're in and it'll be hard to overcome and let's see how popular it is. Cause um, I, I've just seen the video that Marquez showed of the screen before mm -hmm. the launch and then obviously the pictures of the phone I haven't seen it in person so i don't know what okay. to expect like weight distribution and stuff but who knows yeah i think let's wait and see i think the two things they had going for themselves last year uh, on the pro specifically was at least for me was uh, you know that screen uh okay. without the notch and the 90 hertz you know both of them were great factors back then every phone has them now. So, you know, and they haven't really pushed the boundaries here. 120, so you've got Samsung, you've got the Oppo, they're already doing that. Punch hole display, both of these companies are doing that as well. So, you know, I don't know. I would I mean, like to, to see better charging speeds. So not just wireless charging, but maybe like 55 okay. watt charging or something like that. That okay. could have been an improvement over what it, okay. what it is now. Fair enough. I mean, uh, I don't care much about charging speeds, honestly speaking. I mean, after you've reached 40 watts or whatever, then, you know, everything else is just uh, whatever else doesn't really matter to me. But maybe some people are interested in that. I prefer wireless charging, which they've done on this model, finally. So to me, that's a lot more important. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's the value aspect that I feel that they've kind of lost out on. So let's talk about a phone that could possibly replace that from a value perspective. Uh, Oppo launched the Oppo Ace 2. That was, yep. was that one day before the OnePlus came out? Uh, yeah, I think or... it was one day before. Yeah, one okay. day before. So can you talk us through the specs and pricing on that? Okay, so the Oppo Ace 2 is essentially another mid-range, but like mid-range priced flagship smartphone. 865 processor mm -hmm. from Oppo. It sort of carries this um, Reno Ace legacy but this is the reno name because they're making like the separate lineup for gaming centric phones a uh, high refresh rate display it's got like lots of gaming optimization so it's got something called a 4d cooling system that okay. uh, improves gaming um, according to what they say they've got better haptic engines so when you're playing a game it's more immersive that's a big difference uh faster charging speed so 65 watt charging speed compared to like the 30 watt we see mm -hmm. on the OnePlus. Um, wireless charging as well, I think. I okay. think it's the first phone with wireless charging from Oppo. Okay. And Oh wait, yeah. is this the one with the 40 watt wireless charge? Which was the one that you were telling me which has a fan? Yeah, it's, it's the charger. same one. It's the same one, 40 watt wireless. Okay, 40 watt uh, 40 wireless, wireless. Yes, 40 That's watt wireless. Nice. Um, and it's around $600. So, okay, compare that to the regular one plus eight for, you know, which is okay. uh, what, which is what, $699, $100 more than this? Yeah. So for $100 less, you're getting the same processor. You're getting a similar screen, is it? I mean, you know, the refresh screen. rate same. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what else is it that, uh, you know, you're getting faster I think charging? Faster charging. The only differentiating factor that uh, favors one plus is the software so it's not oxygen os it's right um, we, color uh, OS? what is it color os color os okay. 7.1 that's okay. the only difference right. pretty much okay and i think if you are at that level where you are um, you know looking for a medium end phone obviously pricing is a big factor 
and hundred dollars is about 300 to 350 dirhams or so that's less. So, you know, I would think that both of them are probably advertised as Android 10. I don't think uh, the average layman would be able to tell the difference between color OS and oxygen OS. You know, they just but see Android One 10 thing to note is that the ACE2 might not have Google Play services because this thing's only in China right now. There is no right. plan of like an international device. Okay. But what I've All noticed right. from other Oppo phones in the past is that they have Google Play services built in, like in the background. Okay. So all you have to do is install the Play Store APK and you're good to go. So and you're done. That's okay. sort of what I've noticed with Oppo phones. So it might be the same here. Not, not sure. But Got that's it. another change. Okay. Fair enough. But again, I mean, you're getting a very similar phone for $100 less. So, you know, this is where I think where OnePlus is kind of losing out on, you know. Yeah. It used to be that phone. It used to be the Oppo Ace 2 that we used to compare other phones to. So in my opinion, you know, this is where they're kind of losing on. Um, just real quick on the Oppo Ace 2, the 40 watt wireless charging, that is nuts. I was looking at the Qi wireless charging standards today. And uh, obviously you'd need a proprietary charger to charge the yes. Oppo Ace 2, just like you do for the uh, OnePlus 8 Pro as well. The 30 watt wireless charging on it requires a OnePlus uh, charger. I think the Qi charging only has 15 watt as a, an official specification. So okay. anything above and beyond that needs a separate charger. I think a proprietary charger. I think it's time these guys at Qi woke up and you know decided to upgrade that because the last time this was upgraded was about two and a half years back. Uh, yeah. From you know from I think from five to fifteen or seven and a half to fifteen. I'm not. Sure. I wouldn't be surprised to see if they do it like over this year because I think this year is when we're starting to see more faster wireless charging methods. So. It's yeah, probably prime exactly. Time. Absolutely. And once they do that, then hopefully we've got a wireless charger that is universal or, you know, can charge these phones. I don't know. I mean, would it sort of, for example, I, I don't know if you buy the Oppo charger at 40 watts, would it charge the uh, of OnePlus 8 Pro at 30 watts and the Huawei P40 Pro at 27 watts? Would it do that? Any idea? Sure. No idea. Okay. Like the only okay. way to find out is to order one. It's pretty cheap though. Okay. It's much cheaper than uh, I expected. So. Yes, but here's the thing. I mean, the wireless charger that I have right now, it's a Belkin wireless charger, and it okay. sits on my bedside, you know, where I sleep. Uh, if there is a wireless a charger with 40 watts and a fan inside it, uh, yeah, I wouldn't be comfortable putting that next to, you know, next to where I sleep. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, you know, I think we do need some standards on this to sort of test yeah. that out. Um, okay, so continuing with the phones, I mean, the next one we have on the list is the Honor, Honor 30. Pro 30 Plus. No, Honor, Honor 30, Pro 30 Pro Plus. Honor 30 Pro Plus. Okay. Yeah. All right. So contrary to the P40 Pro Plus from Huawei, this is aiming, like this is sort of a replacement to the P40 Pro, not the P40 mm -hmm. Pro Plus. Okay. So it's pretty much identical specification, 6.57 inch display, 90 hertz. EM, um, Magic UI, not EMUI. Mm -hmm. uh, no Google Play services. It's got App Gallery. Mm -hmm. um, dual camera notch, 32 megapixel front facing cam. Okay. And slight differences in the primary camera. So if you looked at the DxO mark rating for the phone, which I think came out today as well, it yeah. scored 125, three less than the P40 Pro, which was at 128. Yeah, and I think more than any other phone because 124 is the highest that I've seen anywhere yeah. outside the P. So, you know, but uh, if correct me if I'm wrong, they use the um, Sony um, image sensor, right? Not Huawei's yeah, custom image sensor. Sony, Sony. Okay, so the image sensor is going to be different on it. It's going to be Sony mm -hmm. versus P40's got its own kind of stuff. Okay, all right. But uh, yeah, again, I mean, there are just so many phones and I'm assuming, uh, w where do you think this is gonna be priced at? Like $600, $700 so range? I think? converted uh, the Chinese pricing because this thing's only available in China at the moment. Again, it's I think it's on pre-order today with uh, sales starting on the 21st, if I'm not mistaken, in China. Okay, all right. And it's priced at 5,000 yuan, which translates to around $707. Roughly. Okay, so it is a bit so of a pricey 2, size. Two thousand five hundred ninety-nine. There. Okay. UA. All right. Okay, that is a bit on the pricey. But side. again, it's it's still cheaper than uh, the P40 Pro. So, and it's it offering is, but... a sim similar design, similar software, similar hardware, processing. Yeah. 
Yeah, possibly so. Possibly. So. I think phones are getting so common these days, like everything so similar. It's really hard to differentiate because back in the day when you're talking about one plus one, one plus two, the competition wasn't as fierce and you could mm. easily see a difference. You could easily see differentiation. So let's say if one plus gave you a phone with the highest in specifications for uh, $300 less, that would be very much appreciated. Yep. But nowadays, it's like 10 other companies are doing the exact same thing. So it's oh, absolutely. really hard. I mean, just between the last time we recorded this episode and this one, we've seen like three or four different new phones pop up in a matter of two weeks, you know? Yep. That's more than one phone per week. So, yep. uh, you know, you'd think that the market is already saturated, but uh, they keep bringing them on, you know? It's like a new phone every but day. Speaking of new phone, there's another one. Okay. And it's the LG Velvet. All right. So what have you heard about the LG Velvet so far? LG is still alive in the phone business? It's coming back. It's making a return. LG has a soft spot in my heart because that was one of the first ever phones I covered when I got okay. into this industry. So that was the first mm-hmm. phone I reviewed. That was the first review unit I got. Right. There's Which one was it? The LG G6. or the V? The G6. 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 Okay. Yeah. Right. And that was actually the first phone that started the 18 by 9 aspect ratio displays. Yeah. So. That's true. Don't I think LG, LG like that. It's weird, yeah? I mean, LG's got decent phones out there. I mean, you know, when you look at their G or V series as well, I used to like the V series. I think they were quite awesome that way. They just failed to catch on. I mean, I there was one But it's or in the two. US, it's still going on, right? LG V60 thing Q. Yeah. I think that's the one. Exactly, exactly. They still, they're so strong over there. But globally speaking, I mean, you know, they've lost a lot of market share to Samsung. Um, you know, the, Good phones, just terrible marketing, I think. Yes. Just unfortunate with the marketing stuff. Uh, but tell us about the Velvet. Velvet. I mean, yeah, so what do we know about the okay. Velvet? Okay, so Velvet, apparently it's going to be a mid-range smartphone, as per rumors. That's what they're going for. But I think the design language will obviously carry over to a flagship one in due time. Mm-hmm. Um, the biggest changes in design will be the curved displays and the curved sort of body, so things you don't like. There's going to be displays that are curved on all sides and the back is also going to be curved so it's easier to hold and it's more comfortable in the hand they're going to focus a lot on aesthetic that way and they have this thing called a raindrop style camera system so instead of having like one big island of cameras it's going to be like separate camera units sort of falling down like a raindrop so I guess I it's did unique. See a of maybe, the yeah. maybe it eliminates the whole big camera bump sort of problem. Not sure. But it looks hmm. different. It looks unique. Um, I did see renders after the official images from LG, actually. And it's going to have a punch hole style camera. So that's something that's new that I found out after the LG sort of press release. Got it. But okay. these are renders. These aren't like set in stone but i'm pretty sure it's going to be something that the renders are pointing at so yeah i'm interested in it i'm interested in it only because people are saying it's going to focus on bringing like high-end specifications at a very comfortable design so it's going to be a small phone and nowadays we're seeing like huge phones everywhere Hmm. and maybe that's how they could get back into the market possibly so possibly so so bunch holes everywhere Every single phone the manufacturer is going for that now. I'm yep. assuming uh, the next thing is going to be behind the screen cameras, which yeah. Oppo, I think, was the one that spoke about it some time back. Where Oppo did uh, you speak about to... it. But recently I've been hearing that the Galaxy S21 is okay. working on like a rear, like behind the screen camera. Is that something they okay. want to test out? Okay. So that could be... Or we might see it on one of the fold or flip phones as a concept because. At the end of the day, the fold and flips are still pretty much concept phones. So maybe they could test it on that and then bring it to their flagships. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, unlike you and I, I think a lot of people really use the selfie camera. So if it results in a degrade of quality, which I'm assuming, considering it's going to be newer tech, you won't necessarily have uh, you know, the sharpest shooter on the front with the, with the screen on the front. I'm assuming there will be some challenges with that, at least initially, until they sort that out. They're not just so, sell like the mod mod like a small camera mod so if you want to take a selfie just pop it onto the USB-C port and take a selfie I think you and I would love that you know but uh, you know most other people you look at the um, you know which was uh, the Huawei Mate XS you know the foldable display where the primary camera is a selfie camera 
and uh, you know you've got all screen literally on top so i love that design i still think it's a fantastic design you know it just solves so many issues that uh, we kind of talk about on these phones uh, maybe that is the future i mean how how expensive is a screen and if you can just slap one back which some manufacturers have done previously you know just have a small screen on the back for selfies and stuff like that um you know, who knows? Maybe, maybe that is something else that we could do. But speaking of screens and uh, you know, wraparound screens, did you ever follow up on um, Xiaomi? They had the Mi Mix Alpha. Remember that? The one with the whole curve. You haven't seen that? Oh, I you have seen it. That one. I've the just seen it. it yeah. I've seen like yeah. videos and exactly. renders of it, but nothing like in hand. Okay, but I mean, do, can do you think that could possibly be the future of phones? I mean, you know, like what is stopping us from an all-screen phone? What, you know, what is it? I mean, there, there isn't really anything that, you know. It could be, it could be, because we've seen like the Mate XS sort of replicate that yep. in a foldable concept. Mm-hmm. Um, we've I mean, also we've had got glass screens phones. anyways. Yeah. We've got uh, glass you know, backs. Glass back, exactly, sorry. So from it a tech be. point I've of view, seen... there isn't much. Yes, yeah, so I've seen a phone which had like a small display here. Yep, I forgot exactly. the name. Was it Mizu or someone who did that? I'm not I don't sure. remember, but I do. Yeah, but I do remember seeing one as well. Maybe that could be one way to eliminate the notch in the front. Yeah, I guess the like only that. problem with that is that people like covers, and that that kind of blocks, you know, everything on the back. Yeah. So, who knows? Let's wait and see where that goes. But that would be like a good midway sacrifice until you know we start yeah. seeing good until quality under screen camera. Agreed. Agree. Cool. Okay. So shall we move away from phones? Yep. Talk um, about more relevant things going on in the world. Absolutely. Which so is COVID. Google and Apple coming together. For the first time. <laughs> when was the last time we saw that? Well, I won't say what the first time with the, the original first... iPhone they were there. Uh, when uh, Google made the Maps application on the original iPhone before the whole... So I was Android. too young to even remember that. So okay. <laughs> this is the first time for me. <laughs> All right. Okay. So with the original iPhone, just a little uh, history lesson for you guys. Is, okay. uh, uh, Google was the one that designed the Maps application for the iPhone, and it was powered by Google Maps. Um, you know, this was all pre-Android, before Android was released. Um, and that is the reason why Apple Maps exists right now, because, you know, obviously they had to break ties once Android was out and they sort of had to get their own way on there. But uh, yes, after a very long time, the two players are coming together to, uh, for a good cause, actually, uh, for COVID-19. Yeah, absolutely. So the idea is that using the Bluetooth technology on their yeah. phones, they want to sort of unify a standard, unify uh, a standard where you know you can potentially figure out people around you who might be infected so you know you kind of know where to go and where not to go um i've read a little bit on this so i can talk a little bit about it have you read any detail yeah. on this or okay so tell yeah us so what you think i think the bluetooth standard you're talking about that's a few months away but for the moment i think starting in may they're going to release um, applications for the App Store as well as the Google Play Store. So once okay. people download those applications, what's going to happen is the phones will be able to exchange information between each other using encrypted keys. So that's right. how they're going to do it. So for example, um, I was just going off of some visuals that were on the page. Let's say some people meet up randomly at a park or something, and they exchange like a conversation for 10, 15 minutes. Within that time, their phones would have exchanged their specific keys. And then let's say in a few days time, one of the two people got diagnosed with uh, COVID-19. Um, their keys for the last 14 days would be sent to the cloud in a secure manner. And at the same time, the other person's phone would be constantly looking at the cloud to find a key match with that person. So mm -hmm. as soon as that phone finds a key match with that person, this person is notified saying, okay, um, the person you met in so-and-so day was diagnosed at so-and-so time with COVID-19. So you might want to go to the mm -hmm. clinic, go get tested, et cetera. And that's how the whole cycle works. So anyone you meet uh, will then like sort of get notified once someone else becomes positive or yeah, that's how they keep okay. track of everyone. 
All right, so the little that I want to add on to that, what you just said uh, that I've read is that basically there is going to be not one, but I think two or three set of keys. There's going to be a permanent okay. key which will be tied with your hardware ID, and there's going to be one which will be a temporary key that will keep yes. regenerating every few yeah, I think or whatever time limit. And that's mm -hmm. the key that's going to get exchanged. And okay. the, the way it works is that it's somehow tied to your key, which doesn't get revealed uh, to anyone else. So this is how they've sort of handled the security aspect of it. So nice. there is no single key that can you know work on that. Uh, and yes, absolutely. And then even, I, I think the apps themselves are not going to be from Apple and Google directly. So they're going to okay. enable the framework on the App Store through uh, through a kit or an extension or an API or whatever else that you want to call it. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. then exactly, and then apps will be developed by government authorities, healthcare authorities, all of that. They okay. will be able to use that. They'll provide them with access to these, where they can then develop an app for it, and then they can then you know basically find out exactly what you said. So you know, yeah. diagnose if someone if you someone you've met has been diagnosed with it or something similar along those lines. Uh, that that is just my understanding. I think it. for the short term, for the short term, I think um, the app system will work, and then over the long term, obviously the Bluetooth uh, integration. I think that'll help a lot because then it eliminates yeah. the step of going through an application and all of that. So, yeah, absolutely. I guess so. Here's one thing which again separates Android and uh, iOS. Considering that Apple is the only company that makes iPhones and they make like maybe three or four iPhones in a year, there's a very limited number of iPhones. And obviously, since it's Apple, they probably source all of their equipment from one manufacturer. So the Bluetooth module present on them is probably mm -hmm. going to be, it, it's going to be something that's going to be much easier for Apple to implement on iPhones Correct. versus Google, which has to go through every single different phone manufacturer with, you know, so many different varieties of Bluetooth chips that they've used inside, very, you know. Yep. Uh, 5.0, 4.0, 4.1, 4.2, whatever it is. So it's going to be a lot more difficult for Google to implement this. Uh, but hats off to them for doing this. You know, I think it's fantastic that they're coming together and doing this. And it's ultimately for a good cause to sort of yeah. help society back on its feet because, like, we're not happy staying at home. <laughs> I'm not happy for sure. <laughs> but I guess this is what's required to come through it. Absolutely. And I think it just sets the standard for any disaster in the future as well. I mean, you know, yeah. this, this has been an eye-opening experience for the entire world. Uh, and I think systems will now be designed in a way where if, um, you know, for whatever reason, we come across anything else, any other pandemic, then, you know, we're, we're better prepared for it. You know, we're, we're just better prepared for it. How's, um, how's, how's the week three of, uh, is it the week three of lockdown? I'm on, I'm on like week, I don't even know, week infinite. <laughs> Have you taken any new hobbies? Um, playing the keyboard. Okay. Exercising on a daily basis. I don't know right. if that's a hobby though. Um, well, anything different than you didn't do before? Let's just. Yeah, and I and I've started like uploading some videos on my channel, playing some more games. All right, nice, excellent yeah. stuff. Well, excellent stuff. Um, I've taken up cooking. I mean, you know, it's oh, well, not wow. necessarily. Yeah, it. I wouldn't say that I'm passionate about it. I think I'm okay at it. You know, I don't find it very difficult. Uh, okay. And at least I like whatever I cook, you know, it tastes fine to me. I'm not sure if I'm the best judge of that, but uh, you know, it's completely fine for me. Uh, you know, with a little bit of help from friends and services, I've uh, cooked four or five different things now and they've all turned out fine. They've all turned out, you know, edible, fine, okay. Uh, but again, it's not something that I think I'm passionate about. Uh, you know, I don't mind doing it. You know, I guess that's how I could say I, I wouldn't necessarily say that I enjoy doing it, but I don't mind doing it. So um, it's, it's a good skill to have, I guess. It's something interesting, something different. So, you know, that's what I've been doing for the last couple of weeks. Uh, I don't know. Once, so what have I cooked over the last few weeks? I have cooked um, sort of like KFC style fried chicken that actually turned out quite okay. nice. Uh, yeah. I did uh, bake my own bread at home as well. Um, no bread makers, so completely wow. from start. Yeah, that turned out okay. I think it needs a little bit of tweaking. I need a little bit more work on that. Then I made sweet and sour chicken a couple of days ago as well, which actually turned out quite nice as well. And all of these were from scratch. I mean, there was... Uh, obviously, there was a recipe to follow and there was a guide to follow, but all the ingredients were fresh ingredients that were, you know, 
uh, prepared at that time. There weren't any boxes of uh, pre-made stuff or anything at all involved from that. So uh, and again, these, I wouldn't say these were super challenging to make. They took me maybe two to three hours to do all of that. Well, each one of them took about two to three hours to make. So not super challenging, not something I felt strongly passionate about, but it was okay, you know, it was fine. I, I didn't mind doing it. You know, I wouldn't mind trying out a few other recipes and stuff. So yeah, that's what I've been doing on that. I would um, recommend you make like yeah. a cheesecake or something next for dessert. Hmm. Okay. Well, my daughters are into baking nowadays. Uh, I think they're okay. missing out on dessert. So they've started cooking a few desserts. So, you know, yeah. I'm having that, but uh, maybe that's the next thing. Who knows? All right, cool. Yeah, so I think, um, I think there's just one more thing to discuss before we wrap <laughs> up, I guess, this show. You know what? Let's check our emails just before we actually talk about this. All right. So it took me two to three hours to finish checking my email, but I think I'm finally done. The new background behind you kind of gives you the night and day kind of <laughs> segment on it. But Apple has finally go gone ahead and released a new iPhone SE, which is uh, basically a rehash of the iPhone 8, 7, 6 uh, with a newer processor, newer camera, upgraded internals, pretty much exactly what they did with the original iPhone SE, which was the design for the iPhone 5 and 4 with the newer internals. So, um, so yeah, there it is. Amazing. Um, Sixteen ninety nine dirhams pricing locally. Yep. Thoughts? Or um, I think it's a great phone because it, well, we were expecting when we filmed earlier, we were expecting A12. This is A13. Mm -hmm. So that's obviously something. The latest that, processor. Uh, yeah, that took us by surprise. I think also the fact that it has wireless charging. Yep. It has IP rating official. Yep. Are two things that um even the cheaper one plus phone we talked about doesn't have yep so I and think, it's like 399 dollars which is a good 200 dollars cheaper than the one plus yeah. so you know 64 Three. gigs of base storage though yeah without expandable memory that might be an issue for a lot of people yeah. but exactly maybe. um the only thing that i'm not sure about is the camera now it is a 12 megapixel camera Yes. And it is obviously the A13 SOC, but uh, whether the sensor is... That, yeah, people are saying it's similar to the iPhone uh, like 11, but I'm not sure which one. I a don't lot of comparisons know. have been made on like, it's, it's the same as the iPhone 11, it's the same as the Pro Max, I'm not sure. So basically the primary camera on the iPhone 11 and the Pro is exactly the same. Uh, okay. They both have ultra wide angle as well. The only thing that makes it different is that the Pro has the telephoto, which is not yep. present on on the iPhone 11. Uh -huh. So I would be very surprised if this is the iPhone 11 sensor. I would think they are probably using an older sensor on this. Now I'm not sure how old, whether it's 10, 10s, or even older than that. I'm not sure, uh, but I'd be very surprised if they're actually using yeah. the 11 sensor. That would be phenomenal. Because the 11's got a pretty I saw camera. I saw a lot of people saying it's the 11 sensor. I don't know about the credibility of that, but a lot of people online have said it's the 11. So, wow. Well, fingers crossed. Uh, it goes on pre-order this Friday. This so, Friday. Uh, and then I think the week next week it's it's available for people to buy. It's only available in black, white, and red three colors. So, so but um, they changed they changed the look finally. So now it's the red and black. Um, as opposed to the red and white Correct. that was previously. the front is black exactly which will look yeah. quite nice i think that's probably something that most people will go for um okay. you're gonna buy one uh, i want to it's okay. 1699 yeah uh, it's a good price for its mm -hmm. the features it's a very good price uh, let me see if i'm totally invested in the apple ecosystem you you know i want a macbook so if that goes through and I sort of want to, then I'll probably buy this as a second phone because I don't see a problem in using it as a second phone. And yeah, of course, like sure. an Android flagship, because I don't, I don't see myself switching to Apple fully like you, but mm -hmm. definitely partially with this phone being so affordable, it's a possibility. Yeah, I think it's a great entryway for anyone looking to enter the iOS space. And also for someone who has a three-year-old iPhone and you know, thinks that 4,000 dirhams is too much to pay for a phone. Uh, I think this is probably the best thing that Apple could have done. Even for like, um, I'm pretty sure like older people, so like grandparents and maybe even really young children and stuff. So because Apple gives you the ability to use 
what's it called? iMessage, I think. It's mm. like a proprietary chat. So like you can directly connect with your loved ones. You have FaceTime as yeah. well. It's not available in the UAE, but mm -hmm. it could be a way to basically keep uh, in touch with all your family in one ecosystem. I think for kids, yes, definitely. I wouldn't know about grandparents because 4.7 inches is probably a very small screen size yeah, now. Um, you know, it, it's probably just too small now for, for their aging eyes. Uh, but I think for kids, yes, I think it will make an excellent addition, uh, you know, if you want to do that. I'm very excited to check out the camera on it because I think that's the only question that I have about it right now. Everything else, obviously, we already know. Um, you know, interestingly, it's uh, <laughs> well, the iPhone uh, 11 doesn't work very well when you're wearing a mask when you're outside. So I have to input my password every single time. Uh, it's so a maybe it's such ID. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, well, unless you're wearing gloves, which then obviously you can't really do anything with that either. But uh, no, I think it's a fantastic addition. I mean, it's exactly what uh, we were expecting it to be. Well, better than what we were expecting it to be. While we're on the topic, what do you, let's, um, let's just compare to Android just for a bit. So the iPhone 11, or sorry, the iPhone SE 2 shares mm -hmm. exact same design language as like the older iPhones. What Correct. would you say would happen if, let's say, an Android manufacturer didn't change their design, but upgraded their specifications just like this and offered a cheap version of their older phone? Would it be a similar hit or would it be different? So you're basically describing the Pixel 4a. Yeah. So I'm not yeah. just saying Google, but let's say another manufacturer like, for example, Samsung. Oh, it wouldn't um, fly. Not it wouldn't fly. It wouldn't Why? fly. Simply because there is so much competition in the Android world. Uh, okay. Apple has the advantage of being the only company that manufactures an iPhone. So, you okay. know, they can do whatever with it. Uh, but uh, within the Android ecospace, there is just so much competition, so much undercutting that uh, I don't think it will fly. I think if, uh, look, I mean, again, we're talking about phones that are about 16, 17, 1800 dirhams, which look a lot more modern, uh, you know, have decent specs, have a decent camera and all of that on there. This, I think, is, um, so anyone who has 1,500 dirhams to spend, uh, you know, probably never thought of a new iPhone uh, with the SE2, now they will, you know, mm. now they will. Yeah. Uh, even more exciting is that the uh, Magic Keyboard 2s are for pre-order, and I was looking yeah, at the website. That. Delivery dates that. is like just two to three business days. So, you know, in two to three business days, you can actually have one of those as well. Are so you ordering it? Is, um, I'm going to try to see if my Apple connection can hook me up with one. Uh, but if, if they can, then I will definitely order one, like 100%. I'm really I excited give the iPad, to see it. Yeah, I want to give the iPad as a shot as my primary device. Um, and I think okay. this would help tremendously in that effort. So, uh, you know, you never know. Maybe our topic uh, next time around could possibly be me using the iPhone primarily for the last two weeks or so. And, you know, yeah. just talking about that. So who knows? Maybe it could be me using an iPhone for a week if I were. <laughs> yeah, <it>. exactly. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> who would have thought those would be our talking points the next episode before we started this, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. Awesome. Well, I right. guess then uh, that's pretty much it for episode two of Bit by Bit. I uh, hope you enjoy. But, but where can people follow you? Sorry? Where can people follow you? Um, Twitter, Instagram, anywhere. YouTube even. Okay, and what is your, well, hopefully you have that already on yeah, the screen. It's now. all on screen. Perfect, fantastic stuff. And this is Abbas signing out. We will catch you guys in the next two weeks. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Keep the comments coming. Let us know uh, if there's anything that you Feedback, want us yeah. to do differently. Absolutely, if uh, this new format suits us, whether uh, Weber's uh, S20 Ultra selfie camera was better than the iPhone 11 selfie camera that I'm using. Of course, I'm pretty of sure course it was. was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure it was. <laughs> I might be changing my phone next week uh, to, you know, to match that. Um, yeah. But yeah, until uh, the next couple of weeks, uh, have fun and see you guys next time. Bye-bye.